What's up guys, welcome back. So as I mentioned in a previous video, there are two things that we wanna focus on when um, on this channel. One is the food. There are a lot of great food truck operators around who are doing a lot of great things. And two is the business side of it for those who want to get into the industry, those who don't have the information readily available to you. I want to, um, as, a, as a previous food truck owner myself and a brick and mortar owner, I want to share this information with you so that you have it and you can use it and you can start off the correct way, the fast way, and you don't have to go through a lot of the hurdles that some food truck owners go through during the startup phase. So this video is specifically for the top 10 mistakes that startup food truck owners make. And the goal is so you don't make those mistakes, right? So let's jump right into it. All right, number 10 trying to appeal to everyone. What do I mean by that? You're gonna have people come up to you and they're going to look at your menu and they're going to say, you should add this, or how come you don't have that? Or here's what I think. I mean, you know, people just love to give you their opinion even when you don't ask for it. You're going to have people who come up to you and say, depending on what you serve, why don't you add that? Why don't you add this? Why don't you add that? What happens is, and why you should not do that and why you should focus on what you're focused on is because when you start bringing in things that are outside of your brand or outside of your concept, your menu starts to get diluted. And when your menu starts to get diluted, it starts to cause confusion. Confusion from the actual customer who's asking you to put it on and confusion in your actual kitchen for those who are making the different things that you're serving. Food truck, food truck spaces are small. You don't have a bunch of room for a bunch of stuff that you may have in a brick and mortar where they can have a bigger, more vast menu. It's because they have a lot more space to house those different things and they have the the leverage to be able to do so. You can't have 30 different things on a food truck. You just don't have the space. One thing you don't want to have is confusion when people look at your menu. You want them to be able to look at it, to figure out what you do, to be able to make a decision, order, get it, and then move on so you can serve the next customer. Number nine. Number nine is not spending as much money as you possibly can on the truck that you're going to get. Now, let me preface this by saying I know it's not easy to dump a bunch of money into a truck because you're fighting just to get money to get in business anyway. Everybody doesn't start with bankrolls that, you know, you have three years worth of cash flow and expenses. Like, everybody doesn't start like that. I didn't start like that. 99% of people don't start like that. Ninety, The overwhelming majority of people are bootstrapping. And you're just trying to stack money and reinvest and stack and grow and grow and grow to the point where you can do different things and can leverage different things, right? So I know that going in and i want you to understand that the more you can put up front it actually helps you on the back end because the better truck you have you don't have to worry about it breaking down and you actually missing a full service of work you can actually travel you can do more you can get to places that you couldn't otherwise you know you just you don't have those you can save money up front but you're going to have a bunch of costs on the back end because your truck is giving you issues where if you just took care of that and did as much as you possibly can to get the best truck you possibly can you'll save that money not on repairs and whatever else it is and put that money back in the business i've never heard of somebody breaking down and being able to put the truck back together and still make it on time to their event i just i've never heard of it i don't know if you you know I, i've just never heard of it and then what happens is the vendors get upset they remember you that happened they you know they may say oh that's okay we understand or whatever but they're still they're still pissed off people know the food trucks are coming so they don't pack a lunch they don't bring a lunch they don't plan on going anywhere for lunch because they expect you there when you don't come now they have to figure something else out in their home i mean it's just it's just bad i've seen it a thousand times so i know it's not easy to put a bunch of money up front into your truck but as best as you possibly can if you have to wait and save over money i would strongly advise you do that because you don't want that truck breaking down on you especially on the way to an event or the day before an event and you don't have time to get a mechanic on it and get it fixed and get back up on the road number eight number eight is deciding on a concept too early and what that means is you so let's say you're going into it and you you know it's something you've always wanted to do like i've always wanted to have a a taco truck i've always wanted to have a uh, a barbecue truck or something like that right but you don't take the time to investigate the market that you're in and see how many actual other trucks are there that are serving exactly what you want to serve. If the market is saturated with it, you just become another run of the mill truck that's another one serving tacos or another one serving pizza. Your best bet is not to decide too early on what you want to do because the market should tell you where the holes are 
and you jump in and fill those holes. That way you have a unique product. If you're if you have some sort of special twist on what you do and that's not in the market, but it's if what that's saturated, but your special twist isn't, okay, that's different. But if you're not doing anything special, if you're not doing anything super unique with what you're doing and you're just another taco truck or another pizza truck jumping in, it's gonna be tough. So look at the market, find the holes in the market, try to fill those holes in the market with your concept. Don't decide on what you want to do too early and then start dumping money into it. And then you get out here and you see it's not working. And now you have to change and do something else because you don't get that money back you spent. You may be able to sell that equipment that you bought specifically for that one thing. You may not. I don't know. But it's hard to start and then change into something else. Take the necessary time to look at the market, see what's out there, count them. How many taco trucks are out there? There are five. How big is the area I'm in? How many other trucks? It could be anything. It could be Asian. It could be, you know, anything. How many other ones are out there? How well are they doing? You have to make these deciding factors on, or can I move to, or can I work in a different area where it's not saturated, even with doing the one thing that I've always wanted to do? I might not be able to do it in my direct local area, but maybe I can 20 minutes away, 30 minutes away, an hour away. If that's feasible for you, then fine, go do that. If it's not, you have to look at the market and say, it's risky jumping in, doing this, whenever when there's other, there's five or six, seven other trucks already doing it. Think about that. Number seven. Number seven is focusing on what you like. Now, I know you love whatever it is, right? But that doesn't mean that the market does. It doesn't mean that the people love it. There may be a small subsection of people who love it just like you, but do people love it at volume enough for you to actually have a business? That's what you need to be thinking about. Just, you know, those 10 to 20, maybe even those 100 people that love it in your area are not enough to sustain you and give you the volume that you need to stay in business. So you need to take your emotions out of it, take completely remove your emotions from it and look at what does the market like? What What is the market telling you that sales, not what you have this predetermined thought process on the sales. I understand that you, you know, this has been in your mind for a long time and you've been thinking about it for a long time. This is actually like a tentacle to number number eight. But you have to take yourself, remove yourself from the situation and think business. What do they like? What do they want? What are they telling me? You can go survey, go look around, ask people, go to restaurants, look at what people are talking and ordering that may not be available, you know, at scale. Think about that and grow on that and try to find a way to give that to them because they'll buy it. Pay attention to people's trends what they're talking about, what they're looking at, and just directly ask them, is there something that's not on the market that you really love that you wish was on the market? Ask them. Take a survey. They'll tell you a lot. Of, people love to talk to them. Just ask them. They'll tell you. Number six, having your grand opening celebration or party too soon. All right. So listen, just because it's your first day, it's your launch day, it's your first day out does not mean there's no law saying that you have to do it that day and that day only. Wait until you have the kinks worked out. Wait until you've had a couple services under your belt. You have a rhythm. People, your your the people who are helping you, they know what they're doing and they can get the food out. Everything's working. Everything's a well-oiled machine. I mean, literally, you can do it like two months after you open. I mean, there's no rule saying that you have to do this on day one or day two or the first week. Like, there's no rule on this. So, so the problem is if you do it on day one, you don't have the kinks worked out. You don't understand, all right, here's how this works. I'm new, here's how this works. If you have multiple trucks and you want to do it on day one, fine, But you because you've already worked out the, the, the your problem spots a long time ago with your first truck. So that's not, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people, the startup people whose first truck is on the road and they're trying to figure out how does this work? What does this look like? What's the volume going to be? When's it coming? What time's it coming? How fast is it going to come? Because trust me, you can look out the window and there'll be nobody. And then you look out there and there's 10 people waiting in line. It can happen just like that. So wait until you get those kinks worked out and then have your grand opening celebration or party. You don't want to have 20, 30 people deep in line. It's your first day and you have absolutely no idea what's going on or how you're going to handle it because those people walk away. Some may give you the a break of knowing that it was your first day. Some may be like, I'm never coming back to this place ever again because they don't care nothing about your, sh your first day and you're new. Like, they, you know, they've been to many other trucks and many other trucks took care of them really well. And you, they tr they're trying you out this day. They're giving you their money and you completely bombed. So wait, work your kinks out, get a rhythm, get an understanding of how you're going to handle the service, then have your party, have it well, and just keep the momentum going in the right direction. Your momentum, you literally, if you have it too early and you don't have yourself figured out, you can start like this and then the dive can be like a roller coaster. 
So just wait, just chill, relax, work the yeah. kinks, then have your party. Number five. Number five is the owner not functioning functioning like an owner. Okay. This one, I understand that it's not easy to do, especially early, because you wanna, you're on that truck, you wanna make sure that it's going well, you wanna make sure that everything is flowing the way it should. So I'm not saying that um, you should get off that truck and leave it to the people who are helping you and you go and do something else. Everybody has a different timeline on this. Everybody has different goals for what uh, their truck that they wanna do. So, um, you know, for the person who has a truck, wants to run that truck, that's the only truck you have, this is probably not for you because you're probably going to be on that truck yourself because you know you got different goals and there's nothing wrong with that the person who wants to scale to a brick and mortar or start franchising nationally or internationally you're going to have to get off that truck and start doing other things to help grow the business and leave that truck to the people who are helping you once again i know this can't this is not something that uh you can do on day one day 30 day 60 maybe not even for the first year but at some point you're going to have to get off that truck and let the people who are helping you run that truck and you go create new business, be it through new relationships, new territories, new whatever it is. You're going to have to get off because unless you want to be up 24-7 answering emails and making phone calls and all that kind of stuff after you work your lunch shift or your dinner shift, you're going to get burnt out. So at some point, you're going to have to train them up good enough to where you can get off that truck and go do different things. Number four. Number four is a lack of systems, procedures, and training in place for you to as we mentioned number five to be able to grow if you don't have procedures and the ability to train people on how to do it because you don't know how to do it you're just spinning your wheels at that point so i mean literally from day one you should be um, thinking about and even notating here's how i did this from start to finish from pre from prep to from opening to all the way down to closing and driving off you should have start to develop checklists those checklists will create habits uh, successful habits on how you want from the top of the shift to go to the bottom of the shift okay write all this stuff down from your first shift and then you can look at it and you can say hmm I did this but this seemed to work out better change it I mean you know just just customize it and then that builds habits into you and the people who are helping you grow your business recipes checklists I mean everything like that all that stuff everything you have needs to be fluent so that the people who are helping you can understand it so you know it and you can also teach people how to do it everybody's looking at you as the owner and if you're discombobulated you're unorganized you're all over the place i mean what do you think they're going to be but if you got it under control you understand what's going on and you can tell them in a way that they can understand it and then um, um implement it everybody's successful everybody's on the same page and everybody's moving in the right direction number three Number three is a lack of clear vision and purpose. Now, what I mean by that is the people who are helping you run your business. When I say people who are helping you, I mean your employees. The people who are helping you need to understand what you're looking to do, where you're trying to go, and how you're trying to get there. I'm not saying you need to give them uh, private business information, you know, anything like that. But they need to understand that here's our approach Here's how we're trying to give this service to the, our customers. Here's what we want to bleed into the next shift, the next, the next, the next. Here's what I want to do as a whole. You can even say, here's how I want you to help me do this and how I want you to come along and do this with me. It's up to you how you want to phrase that. But when there's no communication and they don't know what you're trying to do, everything is all, you know, everything is just a big cluster. So if you can explain to them, here's what's going to happen on this shift. Here's what I'm trying to do on this shift. Here's what I want to give back to our customer. Here's how I want them to feel. Here's why I'm doing it. Everybody can be moving on the same page. You'd be surprised a lot of people who come in on a um, entry level or a basement level on the on your starting ground with you and want to grow with you. They, they want to be a part of something. So those people who you have there, if you can make them feel a part of something, they'll go the extra mile to help you achieve that goal because they want to be a part of something. They may not have the um, ability to create or even the want to. They might not want to create something like that on themselves, but they want to be a part of something. So if you can explain to them, here's why I want to do this. Here's 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 what I want to create with this business. You'd be surprised who you can get on your team and who will go the extra mile and who will um, jump in front of the train for you to help you to get you where you want to go so your purpose your vision like i said it doesn't have to be super macro it can be here's my purpose and my vision today 
and then it goes in tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. So um, communicate, be effective, be transparent as much as possible. Those people will help you more than they'll hurt you once you become open and they know who you are and what you're trying to do. Number two, number two is believing that you're going to make a ton of money on day one. Depending on how you start, depending on what type of venue you start in, you may or you may not make money. You're going to have things, you're going to have expenses, a lot more expenses up front than you will maybe later on once you can kind of nail down, um, here's what I need for this specific place, here's what I need for that specific place. In the beginning, you're really not going to know your volume unless you um, have talked to somebody who's done it before or you're just soup, you're just a, a, a fortune teller, you know. So you're going to, you may buy more food than you need, you may not buy enough food, you know, just, it's hard to know when you're just getting started, so... The people who get into business thinking that I'm going to make, you know, this is just going to be a cash cow. I'm not going to make all this money and I'm not, I'm, I'm you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to be able to smooth sailing just because I started a business. Now I'm going to be rich. Those kind of people don't last long because they're not realistic when they think about these sort of things. So, you, you know, when you, whenever you have money, I'm not saying that you won't cover costs on your first day or your first month. I'm saying that money is always should be reinvested back into your business so your business can continue to grow or it can continue to move forward. So the people who start, who jump in because they want to pocket a bunch of money and they want to go do whatever, all these other things, you, you're not going to last long because those days that that doesn't happen, your momentum, some people just come to a standstill and they say, oh, this is not what I thought it was going to be. Or I can't believe this is as hard as it is. I thought it was just going to, you know, those kind of, be realistic. Understand that I might not be, I might not profit for the first year. I might, but I might not. Just understand that that might be the case. I might not profit for the first month. So just be realistic when you're going out and doing these things. And number one, number one is not having adequate capital to really get going and be everything you can be. This is the hardest part to figure out because when you are trying to figure out how much money you need, you're making projections on it, right? And you can talk to as many people as you want. You can talk to whoever. You can look at the numbers and, you know, it just, a lot of people miss the mark and it's not easy. I've been through it. I know what it's like. I needed to have cash injections because my projections weren't exactly what they should have been. It's the science of this stuff, man. And so what I always try to tell people is whatever it is you think you need, you need 10 to 15% more. I personally would say if there's any way for you to get 25% more, you're really in good shape. So, you know, it's just like, I don't know if you ever, you guys have been in real estate or anything like that, but you've at least heard of house flipping, right? So what happens is you might have a contract to tell you you're in, let's use easy numbers, a contract to tell you your rehab costs are going to be $100,000. But once you actually get into the rehab and you start tearing down the walls and you start looking at different things like that, things start to come up. So that $100,000 rehab turns into $120,000 rehab and you may not have had that budgeted. So now you have to figure out how I'm going to get this extra $20,000 so we can get to the finish line. Well, it's kind of the same here. You may think that you need $15,000 to get your equipment, to get your food, to get everything up and going, but whatever permitting comes up and, you know, I, and it's, it's more, I'll tell you a story. I had my trailer, I actually had a trailer, not a truck. I had my trailer built uh, in Florida and I'm in Ohio. And I don't know what the laws are in Florida, but they had these metal pipes on, they had these metal hoses on, the my my equipment so my my stove my griddle my deep fryers they had these metal gas hoses on there that seemed fine everything was brand new i had it built from scratch brand new they shipped it to me i get it i look at it everything's fine i go to the fire department so i can get my fire department approval and certification um so i can get on the road i hit it you got to get a couple more things but um fire department's one of them so the fire department looks at it everything's great but they said, but you do have one problem. These metal gas hoses down here on your equipment. And I'm like, well, I mean, you know, everything's brand new. Like, what's the problem? So in the event that I ever had to pull my equipment out to clean behind it, moving it could cause those metal hoses to have an indentation or a small hole in it. When I put this stuff back, whatever, at some point that can happen. Well, you know, there's... Uh, a hole in a gas line what happens boom so they said you need to have these flexible hoses and i can't think of the name of them i'll put a picture up of it so you can see them um you need to have these flexible hoses in the event that you need to move your equipment and 
put it back and stuff like that. These flexible hoses. A lot of brick and mortars use them, but it can, have, you know, you don't want you don't want to be in this truck when it blows up. You're dead. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, you know, it can't be caught, can't cost too much. I mean, you know, it's just these simple little hoses down here. So um, I go. I'm thinking like two, three hundred dollars to five hundred max, maybe. But I'm thinking like two, three hundred. So I take it to. I have somebody come look out, look at it, and they say that they can do it. And once I started to price out the hoses, they were about two, three hundred dollars a piece just the hoses. I needed four or five of them. So now I'm automatically. So now I'm, I'm like, you know, and then the labor to do it was it so long story short what i thought it was gonna be two three hundred dollars was about two grand all because i didn't know what i didn't know i didn't know that the hoses that they had on there didn't meet code maybe they met code in florida but they didn't meet code in ohio and that swap out cost me about two grand a money that i didn't want to have to spend on that i had it allocated somewhere else i didn't want to have to do it for that but i had to so this is why I'm saying this is to avoid you those sort of um, huge issues because we all know if, when you think something's a couple hundred dollars and you have to spend a couple thousand, that's a complete shock to the system. And that's that could be for some people the difference between opening and not getting started in this season or next season, a month or two. To, I mean, you know, everybody's unique in their own um, journey and that could be a huge setback. So, um those are the things that I'm I'm saying about when you think you need this amount, add another 10, 15 percent on there, add another 25 percent on there, because things may come up that you don't expect to come up and you need to still take care of that stuff so you can get in business and you can start to hurry up and start to get that money back. Because the longer you sit, we all know how each day, you know, goes into the next and the longer you sit, the more likely you're never going to get started. So take the time to look at these different things and like i said try to budget more than what you think it's critical i thank you guys for joining me today um i, I truly appreciate it i hope these uh these 10 startup mistakes really help you out and you can take this information and really use it i have a course it's called the food truck bible where it teaches you everything from a to z top to bottom everything about the business that you need to know it fast tracks you in a way that you won't be able to get otherwise unless you have another food truck owner who's willing to sit down with you and explain to you the top to bottom everything you need to know you can start with no experience you can start with experience and still may not know these things there are nuances even if you worked in a restaurant there's nuances to food trucks that you wouldn't know unless you've been on one so it's called the food truck bible you can see here um foodtruckbible.com is where you can get that information there's a free master class where i give you five give away five secrets one of them is how to make guaranteed money on the road um, but I give you five free secrets that you can use. And there's another course that I teach you. Like I said, everything from A to Z, fast track you, get you going, save you a whole bunch of time, will save you a whole lot of mistakes because mistakes can be killer. They can kill you. Um, but that's the goal. So once again, thank you guys for watching today. Be look out for the next video. I'm trying to give away as much information as I possibly can to help you. I appreciate you guys. Talk to you soon.